Today we are going over the best champions for every role in patch 13.8. Since you guys have been enjoying the new format, we'll be going over 5 categories for each role, which are God Tier, Low Elo, High Elo, Underrated and the one to watch out for. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video and start off as always with the top lane. For the god tier choice in the top lane, we just have to go for Clet. With no nerves coming in this patch, he's still winning way too many games. He just has crazy early game damage, mobility, survivability with his passive, and then he can roam and slap and stomp the rest of the map once he gets his ultimate. Kled is the king, outplaying the top laners and the junglers at the same time, and even if the mid laner comes up to party 2, you can kill them as well. If Kled gets fed, he just deals so much damage super quickly, and every time you think you can kill him, he just mounts back up and takes you down anyway. If you do want some help with Kled's best builds and runes and matchups, then don't forget to download our desktop app and let us do the hard part for you. You can see the most popular build options, the highest win rate builds, or even you can check out the best builds from your favourite pros. So click the link in the description and see it all for yourself. Our low elo pick in the top lane is Maokai who's risen back to popularity in that top lane. He has tons of durability and sustain to get him through those early levels, he can set up ganks like a dream with his point and click CC. And in terms of scaling into the rest of the game, you've basically got a brick wall tank with a ton of damage, good sustain and a ridiculous amount of CC. To top all of that off, the main reason to pick him in low elo is because he's just so easy to play. Moving on to high elo though and we've had to go for Riven. Riven is one of the scariest top laners in the game if they're being played by someone who really knows how to utilise her. She just has crazy mobility, relentless damage, tons of different combos and animation cancelling mechanics that you can put together to outplay your enemies. And if you do get too many kills in the early levels or even if you just farm up and scale, you can split push, you can side lane, you can flank beyond teams and clean up fights in a matter of seconds. The time you spend learning Riven will definitely be rewarded. And before you know it, you'll be diving into teams, flashing in with that third Q, lining up a perfect ultimate and one-shotting the entire backline. Speaking of diving into backlines, the underrated pick to go for in the top lane this week is Zac. Now in the last year, Zac has definitely not been underrated, but people have stopped playing him in the top lane and for no real good reason. It starts off in early levels with ridiculous sustain with those blobs and it's really hard to outtrade him. He can jump onto you whenever he wants with his E and if you don't have any CC to stop it, you can't really avoid it unless you've really got those happy feet going. He can set up ganks in that top lane for his jungler with his CC and if that doesn't work out, well he can just roam to mid lane, roam to bot lane and carry the rest of the map instead. We all know just how good Zac is when it comes to team fights as well with his crazy disruption, insane sustain, mental damage and even if he does die, he's still got that passive to get through too. Moving on to our final top lane pick of this patch, which is the one to watch out for, which is going to have to be Poppy. Now Poppy was already in a really good spot, but Riot have actually buffed her this patch too. And now she's probably going to be a bit broken. Poppy has so much disruption in her basic ability, she's got that W to avoid dashes, she's got her Q for burst, even her passive shield is underrated, so watch out for that too. She can set up ganks just like most of these other top lane picks we've gone for, her E into walls is so punishing, and if any fight doesn't really look too pleasing, she just charges up that ultimate and sends the enemies back to the shopkeeper. If you like infuriating your enemies with a lot of disruption and CC, some surprising damage and some serious anti-mobility, then Poppy should be someone you're playing. Let's move into the jungle now and our god tier pick just has to still be Jarvan. Yes, despite the nerfs in patch 13.8, Jarvan is still king of the jungle. He has tons of early damage, great early ganks with that EQ flag and drag combo, his ultimate is devastating in teamfights, and his combination of tankiness, durability, damage and CC just makes him so much better than anyone else you can play right now. We definitely expect some more nerfs coming to Jarvan in the next few patches, but for the time being, keep playing him, keep abusing him and keep getting that free LP. Our low elo pick in the jungle is Nocturne. Every single patch this season, Nocturne has flown under the radar, and he's boasted a really impressive win rate throughout. Nocturne snowballs like a monster. His ganks are devastating with that ultimate, and those spell shields and fear tethers can be really strong too. Nocturne has a variety of builds to go for. You can go Glass Cannon, Axiom Mark, Edge of Night Assassin, you can go for a Stride Breaker Bruiser, but whichever one you go for, you are seriously going to be a problem if you do get a bit too fed in the early game. Nocturne is a really easy champion to play, which is why we've put him in the low elo category this week. But there are still things you can do when you get good at him, like those perfect timing spell shields, or even those drive by smites with your ultimate. If you haven't really tried him yet this season, then seriously, you should definitely give him a go. He's a great pick, and he could be your ticket out of elo hell. For high elo, we've got to go for the recently buffed Nidalee. She's always been a champion capable of destroying games before they even get started if she's being played by the right person. From kiting camps to spearing people in ganks to jumping in and pouncing and biting their noses off. Nidalee can get super duper fed super quickly, get that Magi's Soul Stealer stacked up, and start one-shotting people with those spirits. 
Nidalee is one of those champions that you get massively rewarded when you put some time into her. She is not easy to play, she's not easy to be impactful on because of her unique playstyle, but if you are a bit of a jungle demon in high elo, you know how to punish the enemy jungle, you know how to invade, you know how to gank and keep tempo, this patch is the perfect time to bring Nidalee back out of the locker. Another recently buffed champion takes our underrated spot this week and it's going to have to be Lilia. The prancing dancing queen of the river is back in the jungle and much better than people realise. She can dance in and out of fights and kite with that movement speed and healing and if you do manage to land that 5 man sleep on Lilia in a big clutch late game team fight, the chances of winning it are going to be extremely high. Lilia does a surprising amount of damage, but she's also fairly durable, depending on which item build she goes for. She can go full AP, AP bruiser or even a bit more tanky. But whichever build you decide to go for, you should definitely start to play Lilia again. Finally, our one to watch out for in the jungle just has to be Fiddlesticks. Now, to be honest, we could also put him in the god tier, but he's just not quite as popular as Java. But when you do see Fiddlesticks, you definitely remember why he's so damn scary. Fiddlesticks has a ridiculous amount of CC. He has sustain with his drain, great damage, but the most important thing to think about when playing or playing against Fiddlesticks is playing around his ultimate. Yes, the Crow Storm just allows him to carry games from obscure angles and dive into teams and kill everybody on his own. And if he does get a few too many kills and gets those items sooner rather than later, he can genuinely 1v5. Objective pits, confined spaces in the jungle and everything else like that are his best friend. So if you are playing against Fiddlesticks, you need to always be wary of where he could be. Because ahead or behind, one good ultimate is all it takes for Fiddlesticks to win the game anyway. Moving into the mid lane now, and of course our god tier choice just has to be Annie. She is absolutely everywhere right now at every single rank and winning a stupid amount of games. She's great in the lane phase, she can bully with those Qs, she can set up ganks with her stuns and then once she gets level 6, the world is her oyster. One big flash timbers is all it takes to win any team fight. Or you can just use it to burst down a specific enemy target like their AD carry. She does so much damage in team fights, but she also brings her shield to the table too for that bonus movement speed and of course massive amounts of AoE damage and CC. The nerfs she got recently didn't really make too much of a difference and she's still easily one of the best champions in the game in two different roles. So if you aren't playing any yet, why not? Our low elo pick in the mid lane just has to be Pantheon and yet another champion who probably should have been nerfed in patch 13.8. Pantheon just wins so many lanes and if he does win lane he stomps and snowballs at a ridiculous pace. He can shut down low range matchups super easily with that W and E, he can poke longer range matchups into kill range with his Q and he can roam around the map with that ultimate, carry lanes, carry games and just get super involved at all times. He also has a variety of different builds you can go for, you can go for that Blade of the Rune King Black Cleaver tank destroyer or you can go full glass cannon and just one shot their AD carry every time they pop up on the map. However you decide to play him, wherever you decide to play him, you can't go wrong with Pantheon right now. For high elo, we've gone for Zoe, who got buffed in patch 13.8. Zoe was already in a respectable spot, but now she's just a little bit borderline broken. Yes, the champion with about 17 flashes every single teamfight is back and picking people off left, right and centre. She has great burst damage, amazing pick potential, solid mobility and just a ridiculous amount of utility too with all those different summoner spells and item actives she can use in fights. Zoe definitely takes some practice to play which is why she fits better into the high elo category. But honestly if you do know what you're doing the enemies probably don't know how to play against you. So if you have got a bit of practice on Zoe now's the best time to abuse her. For our underrated pick in the mid lane this week we've gone for a bit of a surprising one. It's Kenna. The electric Yordle is actually in a really good spot in the mid lane and has been for a few patches now. Now you can pick him top lane into certain matchups that you can abuse but actually if you just go mid lane you just run at them with your ultimate, set up ganks, set up fights and you're always going to be there for those dragon team fights early game. You just have so much AoE damage and CC and that's the main reason why he's popping off so much. You get stuck in as often as you can around your jungler, around your teammates and if you do get fed you just press that E, charge towards them, press your ultimate, stun them down, knock them down with your shurikens and GG well played. He's definitely a bit more of a niche pick than some of the other champions on this video, but if you haven't tried him yet, please give him a go, because it may surprise you how good he can be. Finally, our one to watch out for in the mid lane is Fizz. Now Fizz has slowly but surely been creeping his way back into the meta, and every time you play against Fizz and you've not got a great matchup, you realise how punishing he can be to play against. Fizz's E just makes him so hard to punish, but it also brings him so much damage as well. The Q shark combo can be so hard to predict and it can be so devastating if he gets ahead of you in the lane phase. It's not just about diving and killing lanes though because he can roam around the map as his kit is so good at ganking as well. So next time you see a skill shot heavy wave clearing mage in the mid lane, pick Fizz, get level 6, press your ultimate, take them down and snowball your way to an easy win. Moving on to the AD carries now and in the god tier we still have Jinx. She took this spot last time round but guess what she didn't get nerfed so she's going to take it again. 
To be honest, when Jinx is in a good spot, it's hard to really understand why you'd want to play anyone else. Because despite having a bit of a rough early game sometimes in certain lanes, she just scales and slaps teamfights like no other. The long range AoE splash damage from teamfights, the crazy passive resets, and of course the sniper potential with your W and ultimate mean that you're a bit of a monster. And if you do get left unchecked in a teamfight with an enchanter by your side, you can clean up anyone without any problems. Jinx still has to be careful of all those hard engaging diving tanks that are in the game right now, but as long as you can position yourself properly and kite to your heart's content then you're going to have a ton of fun and you're probably going to win more games than on any other AD carry. Our low elo pick though is going to have to be Zaya, who's also really not too shabby right now. Zaya is fantastic when kiting backwards with those feathers and she can lead entire teams with that ultimate E combo. She has great poke in the lane phase too, she also works really well with most different supports, especially Rakan. If you pop that W level 1, you're probably not going to lose the fight. When it comes to team fights, your ultimate makes you so hard to punish because it's one of the best defensive abilities for any AD carry. And if the early game does go to plan, by the time you get to team fights, you're going to deal so much damage they're going to have to focus you, and before you know it, you've landed a full 5 man feather combo. Zaya has been great for the last few patches, so if you aren't playing her in low elo, why not? For high elo, we've gone for the recently buffed Ezreal. If you haven't seen a high elo talented Ezreal one trick in action, then you're seriously missing out because this is some of the most impressive stuff you can see. Ezreal has relentless poke damage and relentless mobility at the same time. It's one of the reasons why he's always been such a popular and safe pick to go for. If you're an average Ezreal, he's just not really that impactful, but if you're an absolute god on him, then he's better than most any carries in the game. He's got long range damage, he's got close range burst, he's got snipes, he's got poke, he's got everything you need to kite around the rift and just destroy everyone. Ezreal is just such a consistent and flexible champion to go for in high elo. You can pick him with basically any support, whether it's aggressive, whether it's defensive, or even whether it's a Yumi. So if you are an AD carry main and looking for someone new to one trick going into high elo, maybe consider picking up Ezreal again. Our underrated pick to go for in the bot lane is Heimerdinger. He's genuinely under underrated in like four different roles but actually it's his AD carry win rate that is the most surprising. Heimerdinger has fantastic push potential, relentless poke damage, he wins short bursty trades, he wins long extended fights, he can set up ganks with those stuns and if you try and gank him he pops his ultimate and laughs as you run through those turrets and kills you all. Heimerdinger does have a pretty niche and unique playstyle. He's all about taking plates, taking names and taking enemies hostage. Heimerdinger is probably one of the most underestimated champions in the game every single week. His damage is surprising, so is his utility and so is his ability to absolutely tear through structures. If you want to tear through teams instead though, you probably want to go for the one to watch out for, which is Cogmore. He's been a little bit underrated for a while, he's been a bit too situational probably, but with the buffs that came in this week, he's actually gone a little bit too strong. Now Cogmore may still be dependent on those enchanters and those comps to fit into, but if you get him into the right one, he is unbelievably good. Cogmore's kiting and DPS in team fights is one thing, but it's his ability to tear through any type of target that really makes him so scary. And if you do lack the reliable CC to lock him down in a team fight and shut him down, if he has the chance to, he will melt entire teams without too much issue. Finally, let's move on to support now and our god tier choice just has to be Rakan. The most mobile support in the game with the biggest potential is still running Riot and his ability to dive into backlines and lock down teams is still just as good as ever. He can dash and dive and initiate and escape and disengage and everything else along that goes with it. He's got heals, he's got shields, he's got utility. He really does have it all. And despite getting nerfed in patch 13.8, he's still the best choice to go for. Rakan works well alongside most AD carries. He works good against most enemy team comps and you just really can't go too far wrong, as long as you have got the skills to pull him off consistently. Moving on to our low elo pick, we've gone for Melio this week. Now Melio is just so oppressive and so easy to be impactful on. Even if you're struggling to land those Qs, your WE and Ultimate's utility will be more than enough to make your mark on any game. Melio also just works so well with those top AD carries. I mean, Melio Jinx is one of the most terrifying lanes in the game to play against right now. And whether you get ahead with that bonus range and healing in lane, or whether you just play for those massive team fights where you can really put your enchanter skills to the test, Melio is just working wonders throughout all parts of the game. And by the way, he's pretty damn easy to pick up and play, making him perfect in low elo. For high elo though, we've gone for Senna. Now Senna does take a bit more practice to play consistently well in teamfights because she is insanely squishy. But she more than makes up for it with her crazy long range damage, good sustain and poke in lane and ridiculous scaling. If you manage to stack up those souls by the time it gets to late game you're going to be able to auto attack people from super far away. 
and they will do some serious damage too. Aside from that damage though, Senna also offers so much and brings so much to the table. Her Q is great at poking and sustaining through her teammates. Her W is brilliant at locking down enemies and escaping bad fights. Her E is great to disengage or engage in with your jungler with that invisibility. And by the way, if enemies have point and click spells, they genuinely can't hit you when you use your E. Then of course, you've also got your across the map ultimate to dish out tons of damage and shields to your teammates. So what's not to like? If you're good enough to position like a beast and really maximize your damage output and utility output, then Senna is a top pick to play this patch. Moving on to our underrated support and for the second time featured in this video, it's Maokai. Now, of course, Maokai's playstyle in the support is different to that of the top lane, but he still brings a lot of the same obnoxious traits to the table, which are incredible CC, brilliant ways to set up ganks and fights, and fantastic impact throughout all stages of the game. Now, Maokai's support is all about jumping onto enemies with his W and knocking them back into his AD carry. He packs a lot more damage than people realize, and the W is so punishing to play against if you don't have flash available. If you can't find kills in the lane, you can just roam up to the mid lane and gank there. You can party up with your jungler and run around the river, or you can wait for those big dragon fights and land a five-man ultimate. Maokai's support is still just as strong as ever, so if you haven't been playing it recently, here's a reminder to pick it back up again. Finally, our support to watch out for and the last champion featured in this video today is Alistair. Yet another buff came in for Alistair in patch 13.8 and now it's really the time for the cow to shine. Alistair's CC is just as good at engaging as it is at disengaging. He's brilliant at peeling for his AD carry but he's also fantastic at diving turrets, taking down enemies and just popping that ultimate and tanking it all fine. The top Alistair players really know how to punish the rest of the map too though. You hex flash over Raptor's wall and knock them back into your mid laner and that's going to be a free kill every single time. From tower diving in the lane phase to relentless crowd control in team fights to peeling like an absolute beast. If you know how to land those WQ combos consistently, Alistair is one of the best supports you can play right now. And on that note, that brings us to the end of our video all about the best champions for all roles in patch 13.8. We hope you all enjoyed the video and let us know in the comments who you're having the best results with. Don't forget to click the link in the description and download our desktop app to get all those stats, builds, matchups, guides and so much more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.